Hi, I'm Paige, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this silk blouse. Let me change into it real quick. All right, there it is in all its glory. So this fabric is a Liberty Crepe de Chine, and it was gifted to me by Minerva. I'll link to their website and the specific fabric down in the description box below. So with this crepe, it has a little bit of a texture. It's crisp and cool and light. It feels like you're wearing air just with sleeves. So for all the supplies you're gonna need for this tutorial, you'll need the fabric, of course, and some fusible lightweight interfacing and the pattern, which this is just one part of the sleeve, the top. It's the Harmony Woven Top Pattern by Style Arc and some thread. In both my sewing machine and my serger, I have a very fine needle, like a Microtex needle. And that's what you'll need for sewing a silk like this. It's very light and delicate to create nice stitch lines and to pierce right through the fabric without disrupting it. Now let's get right into the tutorial. So I took the time to lay out my silk and just scoot it to where along this fold, it's perfectly straight and then laid out all of my pattern pieces. So once I had them where I wanted them, I just began cutting out the pieces and I'm using a micro serrated scissors and that just cuts through silk really nicely without pushing it around and just continued to cut out the pieces and then place all of my match points with chalk. And I just took one piece at a time and set it aside when I was done. You can use your scissors just like this and it works really well, but alternatively you can use a rotary cutter and this cuts through everything really quickly and really cleanly as well. So I'm going to be cutting out my pieces of interfacing as well. And right now I'm just doing all of my prep work. So of course cutting everything out. And before I start actually sewing, I'm going to take some scrap pieces and then just see how my stitching looks and adjust the tension to where it's even on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing with my serger, making sure my threads are tight enough and also not pulling everything in or stretching it out. And then I'm going to be putting on my interfacing pieces. So I put the glue side up and the wrong side against that and I'm going to just press to fuse them together. You can see here that I'm using a pressing cloth and I do this so that none of the glue gets on my iron. And it just keeps my iron clean and protects the silk at the same time. So along this outer edge, I'm going to be putting it through my serger and that's just to create a nice finished edge because it's gonna remain raw and not turned inside the garment. So these pieces are prepped and I can just set them aside and do my other prep work before I actually start sewing things together. So we're just gonna be creating a little teeny loop with this piece of fabric. So I'll sew and trim off the seam allowance. Use my loop turner. Just hook on that piece of fabric and then pull it through. Once it's turned, you can just wiggle it around to make it even. And this is what it will look like. So I'll set this little loop aside. And I did mark my darts, but I want to actually create a line. And this just helps me with stitching because I can see the line that I'm wanting to be stitching. And it also helps with pinning it as well. So I'm just putting my pins along that line and making sure it matches up on both sides. And I'm only pinning into the dart and not through to the side of the fabric that will be seen and I'll stitch the darts, starting at the widest part and going toward the narrowest part, toward the bust, right along that chalk line. And once you get to the end of it, 
you just sew right off the end and tie a little knot. You don't want a back tack. You just tie a knot like this and it creates a nice dart. And then we're going to be pressing the dart down. And I'm going to be using my silk organza pressing cloth. So I can see what I'm doing, but I'm also protecting my silk. And you can see it does such a nice job and it doesn't stretch out the silk underneath if you pull it along it. It just glides right over the silk organza. Now I'm going to finish the raw edge of the shoulders and the center back with my serger. Once they've been finished, then I'm going to be pinning the shoulder seams together. And again, I'm pinning only into the seam allowance. So I'll stitch those, press that seam open, and then align the back. So I'll just pin at the bottom and then make sure everything is aligned nicely and then continue pinning. Right here I'm going to be marking where the stitching line will stop to create that little key hole opening at the back. And stitch up to that point from the bottom. And once you get to that pin marking, then you'll back tack. Now we're ready to begin with our facing pieces. So we're gonna sew these on what is the shoulder seam of this. So just sew right across and make a little mark where, again, that keyhole opening stops right there. And you're just gonna be stitching that bottom edge right there together up until that marking. And then press all those seams open. And then you can connect it to the neckline. So first I'll pin at the shoulders and then evenly pin around the neckline all the way to that center back. And you're gonna stitch from one side all the way to the other of the center back. Once you've stitched the facing to the neckline, then you're going to want to understitch through the seam allowance and the facing piece, but not on the right side of the fabric. And then you can clip the seam allowance and then we're gonna deal with this little opening right here. So we're going to be closing this up, but before we do that, we need to put our little loop in there. So again, make the loop folded in half and then baste those two ends together. Once they're basted, then you can stick that in there and that just helps hold everything together nice and secure. So place the loop in the size that you want it to be for the button you have and just sandwich it in there and pin that into place first. Then you're going to be stitching this all the way down to those two stitching lines from the center back that you have already done. So here you can clip off the ends and see here you can see the stitching lines nearly meet. And we're just going to pop those corners out and you can see things starting to take shape. Right now is a great time to press everything flat. And you can see it's just so nice to press with a transparent press cloth. You can just see what you're doing. You can move things around, but it's protecting your silk. Now the facing is in. You can see the loop is there and ready for a button. And you can tack these down into the seam allowance if you want them to be just even more secure. And then you can sew the side seam. So just pin this and stitch. And I finished the, that seam allowance with my serger and that side seam is done and we're ready for making the sleeves. So right here I have my flounces, which are slightly different sizes. The lower flounce is a little wider and I'm going to prep these flounces by turning them right sides together. And I'm going to be stitching them to create a full loop. 
So just stitch along that and also finish that edge as well. And the way that I do this really quickly is I just chain piece them, which means so one right after the other, like you're connecting them to become a chain. And I do the same exact thing on my serger all at once. And then you can clip them apart and they look really great. It makes it easy and fast. You can press this to either side. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to stitch with a basting stitch one fourth of an inch away from that raw edge on the lower part where the hem is going to be. So you can see that stitching line. Then fold on that stitching line toward the inside like you're going to make a hem and press. And you can bring that line of basting stitches just slightly in on the fold. Once it's pressed, then you're going to fold it over with your hand and put it in the sewing machine. Stitch a little bit and then fold and stitch that down right on the edge where that basting line is. And that is how you create a narrow hem in the silk. We're going to do this to all the flounce pieces. And here I'm just pulling all my threads to the inside and tying them. So I have all my flounce pieces done and then the actual top and bottom portion of the sleeve. I stitch those into a loop and finish that and then I can add the flounce pieces on. So you'll just match up the seam of the underarm and pin and stitch. So here I have my two pieces put together now and then on this seam that's where we're going to add the bottom part of the sleeve. Again, match the underarm seam and stitch them and then you have these beautiful sleeves. And you don't have to hem them because you already did on that bottom flounce. So the sleeves are ready and I'm going to just baste along the top of the shoulder and set my sleeve in as I normally would set in a sleeve. And how I do that is I just reach from the inside and align the underarm seam and match up the matching points, pin it, and ease in any of the top of the sleeve if I need to. Stitch that and finish, and everything is finished on the inside. It looks great. And I sewed on the button at the top. You can see that the loop fits over it so nicely. And the last thing to do is the hem. And I sewed that just the same as the flounce by turning over a fourth of an inch with the basting, ironing, and then turning it again. And once the hem is done, the blouse is done. And you can enjoy all of the fruits of your labor. And now the blouse is finished. It's so fun and these sleeves just you want to shake them around because the flounce is just way so fun. And again, you can find this fabric linked below this video. Don't forget to check out all of the fabrics that are available on Minerva.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can click subscribe and the bell alert next to that to be notified anytime that I post a video. Let me know in the comments section down below what your dream silk project is that you would like to sew. Until next time, go get creative and make something with silk that you love. Bye.